All right, my friends, welcome to another video lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna be learning how to do an output, how to export our finished video product from our timeline to the appropriate location at the file level, our outputs folder. So you can see I have my finished video here in the timeline. And I've got something extra at the end, credits, to give credit where credit is due. You can see I've got the fact that it was edited by me, it's for educational purposes only, and then credit given to the various sources for the creative assets that I have edited in my timeline. So how did I do this? Well, I used the type tool with the keyboard shortcut of T over here in the tools panel. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I did this. So what I'm gonna do is delete what I've done already and recreate it. So I'm selecting it and then I'm gonna hit the large delete key or backspace key on a PC keyboard. Boom, gone. And now I'm gonna grab the type tool with the keyboard shortcut of T and simply begin typing in the program panel. I'm gonna click into the open area here and you can see I get a cursor and I'm gonna begin typing. I'm gonna say edited by colon, return my name. And you can see it is not centered here. It's left justified. So I'm gonna fix that by going over to the effect controls here. And you can see I've got with the graphics selected in the timeline, I have a line in here for text. I'm gonna to twirl that down and you can see I've got some alignment tools here, just like you would find in Word, left justified, center justified, and right justified. If I click center justified, boom. I've got my text centered on itself. It's not exactly centered in the frame yet, but we'll take care of that later. So I'm just gonna click in here and continue typing. Hitting return again. And I'm gonna type for educational purposes only. And then I'm gonna to begin to give credit to my sources. For music, I'm going to credit free music archive.org and sound effects is going to be free sound org. And you can see I'm almost out of real estate here. I'm almost out of the frame. So to give myself some more room, I'm gonna take the entire text block and move it up. Now to do that, to be able to grab this, I need to get the selection tool. And normally I would use my keyboard shortcut of V to select that tool, but I can't because if I type V right now, it's actually gonna type a V on the screen. So what I need to do is actually go over here to the tools panel and physically hit the button for the selection tool. And you can see when I do that, I get a bounding box here. I can actually grab onto my text block and move it around the screen. So I'm going to center it here by aligning it to the center point of my safe margins. You can see I've got a vertical one and a horizontal one here. Now, what are the safe margins? Let's talk about those. I alluded to them in a previous video lesson. So now it's time to really dive in. The safe margins are actually designations on screen for where things that are action oriented and text oriented should be located to ensure that they are visible on every screen that your video might be viewed on. The outside line is called action safe. And this line represents where you wanna keep any action that is important on screen inside. So an example might be a gun pointed at something that's close to the edge of the screen. If you don't want that cut off, you wanna make sure that it's inside this action safe line to ensure that it's visible. The inside line is called title safe, and the same thing applies. 
any text that you want to make sure is visible on every screen that your video might be viewed on needs to be located inside this line. And this is something I'd like you guys to adhere to in this class. So make sure that anything that's action oriented is inside the outside line and any text is inside the inside line. Now you can toggle these guides for action and title safe on and off by using the wrench in the lower right corner of the program panel. Click on that and you get all these choices here. Safe margins is the one that actually turns on and off those guides. So there you go. Now let's click back in, double click and continue typing. And the last thing we need is a credit for additional video. And that came from vidivo.net. I'm gonna get my selection tool again and make sure everything looks as centered as it should. Everything is looking good there. All right, so one more thing I wanna do here is change the font that I'm using. And to do that, I'm gonna head over to the effect controls panel here. And you can see I've got a drop down for the font. Currently it's Minion Pro, which is the default. I'm not really thrilled about it. So I'm gonna click the down arrow here and you can see I have a ton of fonts I can choose from. There are a lot of choices here. I'm gonna actually click in the field here and search for a font. I'm gonna type Helvetica. And I'm gonna go with Helvetica New. And then I'm gonna utilize this extra drop down here for the style of the font. And I'm gonna choose Bold. I like that a lot better. I'm gonna go with that. So I've got my credits now. And by default, the graphic is approximately five seconds long. And that's how long I'd like you to have your credits, about five seconds. All right, so let's head over to the beginning of the timeline here. And we're gonna do something else now. We're gonna take another step to prep our video for output. We're gonna add what's called a video slug at the beginning and end of the video. Exactly one second of black video at the beginning and the end of the timeline. In order to create the black video we're gonna use, we're gonna head down to the program panel here in the lower right corner and click on the new item icon, what I also like to call the foldy piece of paper. Click on that and choose black video. Now, Premiere assumes that you want the video to be the same size as the timeline you're editing in. That's why it pops up with these settings by default. They're based on your sequence settings. So almost 100% of the time, you're just gonna say okay to this. And you can see black video is created. Now, because this is actually video, it is a video asset, I'm going to drop it into the media bin here. Twirl that down and you can see there's my black video. Double click it, open it up in the source panel. And you can see by default, about five seconds is identified here with an in and an out point. I only want one second. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that my playhead is actually at my in point by hitting shift I. And then I'm gonna remove my out point by hitting option O on a Mac or shift control O on a PC. And with the out point removed, you can see we have something like 12 hours of black video to use. Well, we only want one second. And one second in our sequence is 30 frames. So I'm gonna grab the playhead and drag it over to frame 29. Now, why did I drag it to 29 and not 30? Well, if you look, our endpoint is actually at frame zero. That's the first frame. So frame number one is actually the second frame. So if I wanna add 29 frames to my first frame to get 30, I'm gonna go to frame 29 and then hit O for out. And you can see my duration indicator here shows exactly one second of video. The duration indicator will show you the amount that you have selected with your in and out point in the source panel, as well as the program panel. 
Now right now I don't have any ins and outs in my timeline, so it's just showing the full duration of one minute, eight seconds, and one frame. If I actually added an in and an out in here, you can see it would tell me, oh, I've got 10 seconds and two frames selected. I'm gonna remove both those points with Option X or Shift Control X on a PC. Hit the home key, bring my playhead back to the beginning. And I've got two points for my edit here in my source panel. I need one more point down below to make that three point edit. So I'm gonna mark an in at the very beginning. Make sure I'm patched properly, V1 to V1, so that my black video actually winds up on the first video track. And what I wanna do is insert this one second of black video at the beginning here, where I've identified my endpoint, and shove everything else in the timeline downstream by that one second. So in order to make that type of edit and insert edit, I'm going to use the comma key. And bam, there it is. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit. And you can see I've got my one second of black video in here. And I can actually verify that by selecting it and using the forward slash key to mark the clip, identify a selection, and check the length here with my duration indicator on the program panel. This is how I grade you guys when I'm going through your Premiere projects. And I wanna make sure you have exactly one second of black video at the beginning and the end of the timeline. So speaking of the end of the timeline, let's hit the backslash key to zoom to timeline and put our playhead there, mark another in. And this time I can just use the period key for an overwrite edit because I don't need to move anything downstream. And there it is. Again, zoom in, select, mark, forward slash key, there it is, exactly one second. Remove the in and out with option X or shift control X on a PC. Zoom to timeline once again, backslash key. And my timeline is prepped for output. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is actually execute that output. So with the timeline selected, I could go up to file, export, media, or I could do what the cool kids do and use a keyboard shortcut. And that is of course what I'm gonna do. And that is Command or Control M for Make Movie. And that launches the export panel here. Now you can see you can actually toggle back and forth between your active edit panel here, the import panel, and the export panel. And on the left side are a bunch of options for doing outputs. Most of these are presets. We're gonna use the media file option because we wanna control all the settings ourselves and create our own preset. So we're gonna start up here with the file name. Now you can see the file name actually mirrors the name of the sequence down here. They are exactly the same. And this is one of the reasons I am so particular about the naming of so many things that have to do with editing, including the name of your sequence. If your sequence is named properly, your output file name is set to go. Next, we're gonna click on the location line here and navigate to where we wanna output this. So I'm gonna to go to the desktop, to my montage project folder, and then click on outputs to designate that I want this to go to that subfolder. Hit save, and now we have told Premiere what to call this video and where to put it. Now you can see on the next line, there is a drop down for presets. We're gonna skip over this because we're gonna create our own preset. So next is format. Hitting that down arrow here, we're gonna make sure that H264 is selected. H.264 right here, not H.264 Blu-ray, not HEVC H265, but just plain H264. Then in the video tab, you can see that all of these options here, frame size, frame rate, field order, aspect, are all grayed out because we have match source selected here. And what that means is, Premiere is going to output a video based on our sequence settings. HD frame size, the frame rate of 2997, essentially 30 frames per second, field order progressive, and the aspect of square pixels. 
So we're talking about 1080p30. And that's what we want. If we wanted to change something, like the frame rate, for example, we could click on the checkbox here, hit the down arrow, and select another frame rate. We're not gonna do that because we want this 30 frames per second. Next, we're gonna continue by clicking more if more is selectable here. If you've already opened it up and you see less, great. And we wanna make sure we have render at maximum depth selected, use maximum render quality selected, and leave render alpha channel only alone. Leave that unselected. These two choices ensure higher quality when outputting to make sure that your video looks as good as it possibly can. Time interpolation is defaulted to frame sampling, and that's just fine. We're gonna leave that. Then we're gonna grab the slider here and move down a bit to encoding settings. Whether your performance is set to hardware or software encoding, either one will work and give you high quality video. If you have hardware encoding present, it just means that your computer has some helper hardware installed that makes it a little bit easier for Premiere to output your video. But again, either hardware or software encoding will work perfectly. Profile defaults to main. That's just fine. Level 4.1 is great. Export color space, Rec. 709 is the standard for video. We're gonna leave that. HDR graphics defaulting to 100 is just fine. Pulling the slider down further. Mastering display color volume is set to the default here. We're gonna leave that alone. Content light levels are also defaulted. Pulling the slider down further. And we're gonna concentrate now on bitrate settings. This is very important. Under bitrate encoding, you have several choices here. CBR, VBR one pass, and VBR two pass. It defaults to VBR. VBR stands for variable bitrate. And what that means is that Premiere is basically going through your video and trying to use the lowest bitrate possible at every point during the video. And that is usually based on the amount of motion on screen. And there is a one pass option where it only goes through the timeline once and a two pass where it goes through twice doing that. Now I have personally experienced on multiple occasions this being problematic, especially when you're talking about fades to and from black when there is motion present on screen. You'll get weird pixelization and low quality looking video. And the way around this is to use CBR, which stands for constant bitrate. And it forces Premiere to use the highest bitrate the entire time it's outputting the video, thereby ensuring the highest quality possible at whatever target bitrate you select, which in our case is going to be 20 megabits per second. You can adjust that using the slider or type in a value here. Under advanced settings, keyframe distance, this is something that we want to set at a multiple of the frame rate for our timeline. So we have a 30 frame timeline. So we're gonna check the box here and type in 30 frames. And what this means is once every 30 frames, Premiere will perform a quality check to ensure the highest quality possible. We're gonna leave VR video unchecked because this is not a virtual reality video. And we're gonna to head to the audio tab, twirl that down. And the audio format we're gonna utilize is AAC. That stands for Advanced Audio Codec. And then basic audio settings, again, AAC selected, sample rate 48,000 Hertz, which is the standard sample rate for audio in video. You'll see 48,000 Hertz, 48 kilohertz, or just plain 48K. You'll see it referred to in all those ways. Channels we want set to stereo. And then the bitrate settings down here. Within H.264, Premiere used to max out at 320. You now get the ability to go all the way up to 512, which we're going to select, ensuring high quality audio. Next, in the multiplexer tab, we're gonna leave that set to MP4 and stream compatibility, standard. Captions, we don't have any, so we're not worried about that. Effects, we're gonna leave all of this unchecked because we don't need any of it. 
metadata. We're going to head to the drop down here and choose off because we don't need to export any metadata with this. And then we're going to head to general and make sure that all of this is unchecked. Now over on the right side here, you can see you actually get a preview of the video itself. So you can see what Premiere is planning to do with your timeline when it exports it. Everything's there. The range you want to make sure is set to entire source. The other choices are source in out, work area and custom. If you have source in out selected, Whatever you have in your timeline designated with an in and an out point, Premiere will output, but only that. So if you have a four minute timeline and you have an in and an out set for only five seconds of that and you export, you're only gonna get that five seconds of your video. So the safest thing to do is actually select entire source and make sure that you have only what you want in your timeline present. And what I mean by that is, you don't have any slot video at the end of the timeline after your credits and your black, just stuff that you were working with while you were creating your video, kind of copying into the timeline or dragging over, anything that you were temporarily working with. You wanna make sure all of that is gone and only what you want to export is present in your timeline. Okay, so now that we've configured all these settings, we're gonna save this entire setup as a preset so that next time we go to output, we don't have to reconfigure all these options. So in order to do that, we're gonna go up to the preset line here and right next to the dropdown are these three little dots. We're gonna hit those and choose save preset. And we're gonna name this and I'm gonna call this 1080p underscore 2997. That's our frame size and frame rate. Stereo underscore and our data rate, 20 megabits per second. Hit okay. And now you can see we've got our own preset in here. We can just choose this next time we go to output. And everything will be set to go. Okay, so now that we've done all this work, before we actually export, we're gonna click on the edit tab one more time here and save our project. Because if Premiere is gonna crash, it's gonna do it when you start the output. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control S to save and then click back over to export. Cross my fingers and hit the export button. And you can see my video output successfully. So now I'm gonna to head to the file level and check that output. I'm gonna to navigate to my outputs folder here and you can see here is my output video, complete. I'm gonna double click it, open it up and play through the entire thing. I highly recommend that you do this. Make sure, play through it real time and make sure that everything that is supposed to be there, audio and video, is actually present. And once you're finished, rest assured that all your hard work is complete and professionally executed. All right, my friends, that does it for another video lesson. I'll see you again in the next one.